have a problem with the microphone. Uh, I'm Tracy Gilchrist. I'm the feminism editor for The Advocate. And I wonder if you might give one more major round of applause. <laughs> to the Oscars with My Life as a Zucchini, as a very discreet screenwriter, <laughs> you know. But so yeah, it was, I mean, it was the first for, in, in our name. Mm -hmm. And we did good photos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was worth it for the photos. Of course. Um, so we spoke on the phone uh, in early December, so you may find some of these questions are You've heard them before. Well, my answer is you heard also, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were so good that I feel everyone should hear them. So first, I wonder if you would just share with us uh, your inspiration for this beautiful film about women that is unlike any other I've ever seen. Um, well, that's part of the inspiration to actually make something new and, and to put on this big screen uh, a story that hasn't been told yet. Or on, on that in that way, on that uh, on that for a long time. Um, so really wanted to to write a love story to dedicate a whole film to love story to how love is born to to the rise of desire and to and also to the memory of a love story to the politics of a love story. And also wanted to talk about women artists, um, showing um, an artist at work, um, and um, and decided to make it a period piece because. It's if a story hasn't been told yet, it definitely belongs to the present. Um, and to be to have the challenge of um, making the most contemporary film possible with a story set in the past. That was kind of the three things that were on my mind and that I worked around for 15 years before I put this on the screen. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> When we spoke, uh, I believe you mentioned that you had Adele in mind uh, when you were working on the film. Uh, so Adele, I wonder if you would speak to uh, what your reaction was when you first saw the script um, for Portrait of a Lady on Fire and just your general reaction. Well, um, Celine, uh, when, when this script at the Cannes Festival. So my first impression was the script was good, and it was <laughs> okay. So <laughs> no, but just I was like I was very pleased. I mean, we worked, uh, we did our first uh, feature together, uh, Celine and I. So then we didn't work together for like 10, 12 years, something. And so there was kind of a big pressure because I really. Anyway, uh, there was a pressure, and, but I must, say, I must say that the script fulfilled my uh, attempt, expectations, uh, and I, I think uh, what I loved also about the script it was also it was the beauty of it, the complexity of it, but also the fact that it was a promise of 
working together, it was also a just um, a sign of confidence from Celine. It was of trust. Sorry, no way. <laughs> I'm making myself a French mistake. Sorry. <laughs> so, well, that was my impression. I said, I, let's go to work now. So. Great, thank you. And Noemi, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about your reaction when you first read this script and how it moved you. So yeah, I thought it was a, a good uh, script as uh, <laughs> <laughs> And what? Um, no, I was. Uh, as I didn't say it, 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 it was like okay, that's something I never read, read or seen. Uh, it's something that I felt that we've missed. Yeah. Uh, like uh, this uh, uh, painters, women that have been erased from the, the the history, you know, it's like there's the story of women. We miss a lot of things, like the abortion scene. I, I, don't, I never see that. So and um, and this this love story and the feeling of the love story and the and the memory of a love story, like all the details were in the script already. So it was so intense because of this details, uh, this the gay, the looks, the breath, everything was already here, and I was, you know, feeling it, and that was really strong. Great, that was great. Uh, well, you touched on so many things that I was going to ask, so <laughs> that would go that way. Um, not to go into it too too quickly, but um, you know, obviously this is a love story, but this is also. Uh, a story about female solidarity, and I really love the relationship between uh, your characters and, and Sophie. So beautiful how it, it's as though she she's aware of this affair that's happening and is just allowing that, and then the, your characters um, help her with this you know very important um, situation that she has. And then not only that, but as Noemi said that you document it and you reclaim it for women who didn't have that. Um, so I just wonder, Celine, if you would speak a little bit about the power in reclaiming those voices for women who weren't able to do it because they couldn't paint. Well, the, the film is set at this particular moment, the second half of the 18th century, because it was actually a very um, flourishing moment with a very strong, for women artists, women Painter, um, and there were hundreds of them uh, throughout Europe, France, and there were even um, some here. Um, and um, and you know we always told like women progress, or women's opportunity is 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 like growing, getting better. And actually, when I discovered not discovered because I was just I was ignorant when I learned. Um, uh, about this moment of, of art history where there were so many women painting um, painter I, I, I it really feels like it's mostly about cycles like we have opportunities and then we have backlash like we're living a moment where we have opportunity we're, we're kind of going through a cultural shift but we also experience backlash very quickly and strong resistance um, so I wanted to, to, to talk about that but also to show what has been missing uh, well, if because of women not being able to express themselves. Of course, beautiful pieces of art. Um, some of them that have been made and that we don't have access to, some that have never been made. Um, but also, mostly, the, the legacy, the transmission of our intimacy, because that's what's happening when there is no art. We are missing the transmission of not only our history, but our intimacies. We don't have the book that tells about the heart and the desire of a woman of the 18th century. We have one, I mean, written by women and truly committed to their experience. We have very few. Um, I got lost. <laughs> I got lost I was, listening to I you. Got no, I can add something, Celine. Yeah, please do. <laughs> Thank you. No, I don't know, but uh, it's maybe not your idea, but it's mine, so... <laughs> it's just like... So what you we respect miss, your ideas. What I think, yeah. So what I think, what, because what Celine says, that the fact that we miss woman uh, art history is also a way to say that we miss the, relati the, the fact that uh, the male point of view is relative. 
relative, you know, so the masculine, because relative is not in French. But I think this is the the fact that the, that the male point of view is not a neutral point of view. We don't have, I mean, now we have this cultural shift that we, because of the female gas, here it's not the same, but in France it's just really new. And, but we are not used to the fact that actually it is a, a located point of view, how to say that, no? Look at that the main point of view is a located point of view. I think this is also what we miss missing the, the woman uh, history of art, you know. So was my idea. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Noemi, because you had to play the artist and I know that you did some preparation around that, would you talk a little bit about um, how you prepared to um, paint? Uh, so it's not me who is <laughs> painting. Uh, I mean, I did some uh, portraits of uh, Adele, but it was more like uh, uh, Bacon or Picasso, or, you know. <laughs> because I was using, using the right end, because Hélène Delmer, who is doing the painting, is uh, the right-handed, and I'm left-handed, so it was a bit uh, <laughs> weird. But, uh, um, so I, I, I work, uh, before the shooting, I uh, spend time with uh, Hélène and Céline and uh, observing her a lot um, and try to catch the, 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 the gaze of the painter, I would say, the, yeah, the gaze of the painter was, like I felt a really particular gaze, like she was talking a lot about, uh, about that. Uh, between you know really concentrate and kind of mystic sometimes and and, uh, and to try to find this rhythm also between the you know the gaze of the model and the gaze of the canvas and then the rhythm of the you know the steps the gesture the steps towards the canvas the steps backs you know it was kind of a dance and I was trying to to find mine you know, my hands uh, so that was the the most uh, uh, big, biggest part of the preparation for the, the Great, thank you. Um, something that really strikes me about this film, uh, it's, so, I mean, it's so layered, and uh, something that queer people have done for years is, is hide, and you know, kind of look away, and, um, and then you baked that into the narrative of the story, because Mariana's there, um, and it's a secret. Um, so I think that's kind of just a, a commentary. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that layering of um, how queer people especially have had to hide who they are and then how you just made that part of the narrative. It's so wonderful. Well, I mean, when you look at the, the position of the two characters, Marianne has more opportunities than Eloise. Whether Eloise is in a, uh, has money, she's an aristocrat, and she she's straight, so it seems that everything is okay. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, she's in a well, she's in a very worse position, I think. So it's okay. It's about reclaiming the queer narr the lesbian narrative, uh, but reclaiming the lesbian narrative is also saying we lived our life fully. We were activists. We had more opportunity because we were less of women than straight women because we were escaping from a lot of things. Maternity, marriage, she's a painter, she, she's, going on, she's going on with her life. So reclaiming the queer narrative is about saying, yeah, we had to, to, to be silent, we had to have double lives, we had to live hidden. But it's also about, we had other opportunities. If you look at the fight for women rights, it was also led by lesbian. If you, I mean, you know. So it's also life that were fully lived and they are, they, they have been silenced because they were dangerous, because it was a different program. So that's also what the film is reclaiming. It's not all, 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 only about shame and secrets and silence, although yes, you have to go through this because of society. It's also about being powerful and about living your life fully, not being um, contracted by um, sharing your life with men. So it's also about this island that we create for ourselves and you know, men sometimes life could be better. No, I mean, you know, you, you should say it also. In regard to the relationship, I and the two of you are 
Adele, especially those moments when you, your character kind of catches her looking. Um, I wonder if you could, if, they're just so lovely. And I wonder if you could speak to the rapport between you and how you developed that um, kind of return of the gaze. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, I, I must. I can't speak a lot about acting, but um, this way, I must say I think about acting as about uh, like a sport. And the fact that, uh, for example, knowing me and I before the shooting, we didn't uh, knew uh, each other. We really met on the set, and to me, is a very good way to meet somebody because when you meet somebody while acting, is meeting her in in the pure present and in the fact that she don't, doesn't even know, I mean, well, anyway, what, what I mean, the fact, the way she responded to me is uh, she didn't even knew it before she did it, you know, so it's a way that we discover one another together, anyway. So I think we worked, we worked with, uh, around the gaze with a lot of, uh, with a playful way of acting. So I was always trying to surprise a bit, you know, I mean, well, just because uh, I wanted to, to see how she would re react to some different propos proposal or stuff. So, and I think we worked with a lot of love and respect for each other and a lot of joy. And I think this is something that is very important also in the movie, the fact that we were serious, but we were joyful and doing something else more alive. Right, well, there's also so much, there's a lot of humor, and it's really loving and, and sweet. Um, so I appreciate that uh, piece of the film as well. Um, you know, I may, I wonder if you could speak a little bit about working with Adele and how you kind of form a, a working bond. Um, but she, she said a lot, like, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it was like that, it was, uh, uh, I was uh, uh, a, a lot uh, observing her, like who is the, like I, I knew Adele uh, on, on, on screen and she was really impressing me uh, as a, an actress and for me she was really, I had this feeling that she was really intense and she, she is <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, on set since the beginning I was really like observing her as Marianne and I was okay always this uh, curious uh, bird, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and she was, uh, <laughs> yeah, a bird because I, I, I uh, because of the ca the big cape, you know, <laughs> in the beginning. But she was seeing the cape, like, uh, as a, um, uh, intergalactic <laughs> emperor. Yeah, for, her it was, for me it was kind of a, you know, a bird, a really I was mysterious, into, and yeah. she was into the Star Wars kind of thing. Yeah. So, we were discovering each other like that, like we had two different uh, like imaginary imagination, and it, it was like a lot of fun, and yeah, it, it's time, we every, as I said, everything was written, all the details, like the, the looks, the breathing, the breath, the, the, the gesture, like, but, it, each time we we're finding our freedom in this because each time I knew that she was looking at me, she will look at me, but I never knew how. And <laughs> so it was really funny to, okay, so, wow, okay, I, I didn't expect this, so it was, you know, this kind of. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I know that a lot of people have, well, you've mentioned, we've all talked about the gays several times already and in, um, in over the past few years the uh, kind of search to define the female gaze has been on counter to the male gaze which was defined in the 70s um, in my humble opinion this film comes closer than any narrative film i've ever seen um, and i think you do that <laughs> Done now. We can move on to something else. <laughs> but when I spoke with you, um, you know, we we talked about the fact that there's this egalitarian exchange of, of looks. We talked about the fact that there's no um, there's no um, traditional sex scene, which is great. It's this deconstructed, um, very intimate and kind of humorous um, sex scene, or you know. 
assemblage. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, and you said this really beautiful thing about how there are only subjects in the film. So I wonder if you could kind of um, speak to that and what the female gaze means to you. Um, well, female gaze, I mean, male gaze cinema is built on male gaze cinema, specifically propaganda for male gaze. Um, <laughs> it's the art built around male gaze. So male gaze is convention. I think we can say that. So female gaze would be departing from convention. So female gaze is not only about not objectifying a character, because that's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, I mean, it is because you have to write uh, somebody as a subject, and that is work. But, you know, so but it's not about, I'm not gonna show you naked or something like that, it's just, it, female gaze is about sharing the experience of the character who is a female, <laughs> or, or a male, um, um, sharing the experience of the character, everybody's subject, and female gaze is an opportunity to, um, to, to bring new entertainment, new emotion, because it's not something theoretical or cold or something about moral, you know. I think that our sex scene is cool. I think if I do that, suddenly you're kind of, ooh, <laughs> what is she doing in front of us? <laughs> so, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, you always find new jokes. It's crazy. Um, especially here. Um, so, it's, um, yeah, it's about, it's about bringing new narrative on screen. And that would seem like a bit theoretical. But no, like for instance, the fact that this love story relies on strong equality means that the scenes are not going to be built around conflict. So we are departing from the narrative of conflict and we basically live in narrative of conflict. We are being told, a lot also by your culture, that a good scene, because you have the culture of screenwriting, we don't, we are inspired, um, uh, uh, that a good scene is a good bargain. Somebody doesn't want something, doesn't want to give something, the other doesn't want it, and in the end, it's okay. Like, a lot of scenes are built like that. If you depart from that narrative, you create a new tension because equality is full of surprises. That's what equality brings. It seems like it's boring, it seems like it's gonna be, you know, equality, inclusivity, they bring surprise. They bring new tension in the room that is not built around conflict. Um, so it can be more new, more entertaining because surprise is entertaining. You know, I'm always, it's quite simple. It's not about being intellectual or being, you know, they, they, they always try to make it boring. We try to make, like, there is, nobody has more humor than a feminist. <laughs> nobody. Um, so, yeah. The people I work with would probably argue with, <laughs> with me, because, uh, you know, I'm... Because you're not fun? <laughs> <laughs> because you're not a feminist. <laughs> I don't know. No, but I mean, so I can't define female gaze as a set of rules. It's just that we know the rule of male gaze, and basically trying to do something else already is more fun. But you know, we have yeah. to be synthetic. So I can't, I can't, I, you got it. But like for instance, the fact that trying to work around the fact that um, consentment is sexy, well, that was something that I wanted to work around. Like, okay, so consentment is sexy, so how do you put, um, embody that? For instance, the kiss scene is all about how do you make consentment look sexy, and the fact that they both have scarves on their lips, and that they each, and then they, they unveil their mouth, their mouth like they would open their corsage, or that they would, if that's a yes, that's two yes, and that's hot. <laughs> yes. Yes, and yes. I feel like we probably have to wrap up soon, but... No. I, no. I, I do want to um, be sure to ask, I mean, you're, not to just repeat your resume, but for those who don't know, uh, Zoe has directed Water Lilies, groups of people. And then I know Adele was in Water Lilies. And one of my favorite films, Beats Per Minute, or BPM, I'm not sure which we're, yes. which we're calling it. Um, yes. And I wonder if you, and this film is prestige cinema for um, lesbians. And I, I think that it's 
still so important, and I wonder if you would talk a little bit about what it means to you to continue to give stories to people who may not be here in Los Angeles who need to see stories like this, and what that means to um, all of you, if you would, to be able to put that out there for people. Um, we can't, I think we, can't, we don't choose our passions. Um, and I'm glad with, I'm glad that I am totally obsessed with uh, cinema and politics, and because it gives me so much opportunity to make new art. Um, so yeah, it's I, it's I think you should also see, also see it. You know, it's not a duty. It's of course it's a responsibility, but it's not. A, um, we're campaigning. I mean, campaigning for cinema is campaigning for representation. This is all great opportunity for campaigning for art, new forms, new emotions, and new and new society. Because uh, it makes you know making culture is, is is trying to change the world. When you know we're always like there's always this kind of modesty. Like when we ask like can movies change the world, everybody's like no. I know. Well, I'm not saying it can. I'm saying we should think we should we should believe that it can because it's like asking can culture can change culture? Yeah. Yes, of course, culture can change culture. So we're happy to be doomed because we have to go on with bringing lights in dark rooms, or mostly getting in dark dark rooms to see the light. Thank you. Thank you. If either one of you wanted to say something about making these kinds of films? Um, well, I think uh, I personally find always politic on my way on, to art. But uh, that's the way, for me, this is the order, you know, politics, then art. Because I think, but it's just a bit tough, but it's just that I want to say two stuff. First is that I think the lack of political imagination is not only restrained into political, it's a lack of imagination. C'est tout, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a lack of imagination, so it doesn't bring a good film. Like, recycle, recycling cliche is not a good start for a movie, you know? So I would say, as an artist, I won't pick this kind of movie. Um, and also, I'm kind of a feminist myself, so <laughs> I just... Um, <clears throat> Yeah. It's cool to say that and to be like, what? Only It's not happening, by <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, no, well. Uh, and I think that, as Sin said, you know, I think actually culture, it's not only that it changed the world, but it, it creates the world. I mean, so, uh, economy creates the future. There's not like a future, it's like the, cre the future we create. So, uh, what is I think that the movies that makes me the more alive is the best way to choose movie, and they are most of the time they are this kind of political background in a way or form or I don't know how to say that, but I think it's a responsibility and it brings a lot of excitation. It brings, well, it brings a, um, involvement. I don't know how to say that. There's libido in politics. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I am. Uh, I, I feel the pressure that I, I think we need to wrap up. Um, although I'm sad, I know you're all sad. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Celine, Noemi, and Adele for being here. And thank you to all of you. <laughs> <laughs>